So what I got here, this little box, turns a VGA monitor into a serial terminal emulator. Uh, so we've got a VGA output here. We've got RS-232 nine port serial port here. And we've got a keyboard input and we've got uh, USB power. I've got this switch on the top here to turn off the serial port because uh, you need to boot into the terminal software first and then turn the serial port on. Now this is based on two main components. We've got this VGA32 board. It's a ESP32 development board. Um, there's a library called FabGL library, and I'll put a link in the description. Um, but there's a, under the VGA examples, there's a um, serial terminal, terminal emulator. So you might ask, you know, what do I need this for? Um, but if anybody's looked at prices on a vintage terminal, um, the prices are really high. And you can build one of these for around 20 bucks or less. Um, so this is where the VGA port is. Uh, keyboard around the side here. And this is the USB power. Uh, this USB port is also what you use to program it with the software that you download from the FabGL library. Um, so that takes care of that part. Uh, what we've got here is a TTL to RS-232 adapter. It's only got four pins, uh, VCC, RX, TX, and ground. Um, this puts out 3.3 volts. Um, this thing will work three up to five volts, so it works perfectly. Um, so I'll take this apart here. Um, I 3D printed this case to hold it. Oh uh, yeah, there's another thing I wanted to mention. This this is really hard to design a case for. There's no mounting points at all. Um, so basically I've designed it to just fit tightly in the case. Um, and then when the lid goes on, it just kind of holds it there. Um, but it's, it's pretty sturdy. It's not going anywhere. Um, got these screws around the side. I've taken a couple of them out already. show you how I've got it laid out inside. So I'll pop the lid off here. So along the back side here is the VGA32 board. Um, then I've got some mounting holes to bolt down this RS-232 adapter, because that does actually have some mounting holes, which makes that a little easier. And uh, again, it's just four pins that need to be hooked up, and uh, all the switch is doing is um, cutting off pin to the VCC 3.3 um, volts going into there. Um, so the way I use this is I plug this into a VGA monitor with this switch off, and then I plug power in, and you'll see it boot up into the terminal software. And then whatever device I have hooked up here, I can turn this on. Uh, and you can set the baud rate and other uh, things in the software. I'll show you in a minute. And uh, I just wanted to put it in a nice little neat package. So let's take a look at um, it in action hooked up to... A serial device. All right, here's a VGA monitor. I'll get that plugged in. I've got a replica retro computer here. We're gonna load it off of. I've got micro USB power supply. It goes in over here. And the keyboard. And now again, I'll leave this switch off until I get the USB power plugged in. 
So this is what you get when you power it on. This is the FabGL serial terminal. Uh, you push F12 and go into some settings and uh, you can change terminal type. There's a few different ones in there. Um, language, colors, you can update the baud rate, data length, parity, stop bits, and flow control. And I've got this set up here. So now I've got to get this plugged in. As much as I'd love to have a real vintage MSI, um, those are also kind of unobtainium as far as price goes. So um, I've got this as a kit computer. Um, it's really fun to put together, um, but uh, it's got some serial ports on it. Um, so I've got it hooked up here. I got the power turned on. I can hit run and you'll see we boot up into CPM. We'll do a DIR here. I think that's pretty cool. Um, this simulator has multiple drives hooked up to it. But uh, yep, yeah, that's all working through this little device here. Got that switch turned on and they're good to go. Thanks for watching.